Setting up a fecal flotation to check for intestinal parasites is one of the most valuable diagnostic tests that a veterinary hospital can perform. As a veterinary assistant, this is one of the first skills that you will learn. There is a learning curve to this test and you'll become better at reading fecals as you gain more experience. For now, however, have a more experienced member of your team or even a doctor review your fecals. The first step is to set up the fecal. The basic principle behind doing a fecal flotation involves drawing upon a law of nature that dictates that in a liquid, things that are less dense float to the top and things that are more dense sink to the bottom. Therefore, if one can find a solution that is just slightly more dense than most parasite eggs, the eggs will float to the surface and we can catch them, so to speak, on a slide cover slip. In our hospitals, we use a zinc sulfate solution. There are many other solutions that can be used. The fecal flotation involves mixing a small amount of fecal material in a vial of zinc sulfate solution and then waiting a few minutes for the lighter eggs to float to the surface. First, take your fecal sample and dispense it into a fecal flotation container. This container can be any vial that can stand upright and hold about 10 to 20 ml of zinc sulfate solution. The diameter of the vial should be less than the length of a side of a square cover slip. Fill the vial halfway with zinc sulfate solution. Gently mix the feces in the solution using either a fecal loop or some other utensil. Once the fecal material has been broken up into smaller pieces and partially dissolved into the solution, fill the vial all the way to the top so meniscus of fluid bulges slightly over. Then apply a cover slip to the top and wait at least 8 minutes, sometimes longer depending on the solution used and doctor preference. Take this slide over to the microscope and examine it under low power, the 4x lens, to get focused on the slide. Once focused, switch to the 10x lens and methodically scan the slide. This is best done by scanning across the cover slip border at the top from left to right moving down the width of your view field and scanning back from right to left. Repeat this pattern until you have viewed the entire cover slip. The next step is to identify what you're looking at under the microscope. We will go through the common types of intestinal parasites that you might see when doing a fecal flotation. The most common type of roundworm that we see is Toxicara canis in dogs and Toxicara cati in cats. They have round shaped eggs that have a thick wall and are easily recognized. Adult roundworms, when shed in the feces or in vomitus, are big enough to be seen with the naked eye and look like thin spaghetti. Roundworms can cause weight loss, vomiting, and or diarrhea. Hookworms are very tiny microscopic worms that can be deadly to their host. What you are looking at now is an adult hookworm under the microscope you will rarely if ever find an adult worm on the fecal flotation. They attach to the intestinal lining and consume blood. Symptoms of the disease include diarrhea, anemia, weight loss, and even sudden death. Under the microscope, their eggs have a very thin shell with a curled up larva within it. All hookworm eggs will have this characteristic appearance even though different species of hookworms will have slightly different size eggs. In other words, once you know what a hookworm egg looks like, you'll be able to recognize the hookworm eggs from the feces of a wide variety of pets. Whipworms are intestinal parasites that are also microscopic and reside in the colon. Their adult shape is in the form of a bullwhip, hence the name whipworms. They cause diarrhea, colitis, and sometimes death if untreated. Their egg is oval shaped with a cap at both ends. Since sometimes the whipworm egg can be similar to other more rare intestinal parasites, it is recommended that you check them with your doctor or another experienced member of the team. Coccidiosis is a disease caused by a protozoan species. These parasites cause diarrhea in young kittens and puppies. Oocysts, which are the equivalent of their eggs, are shed in the feces and can be seen in a fecal flotation. Depending on the species of a coccidia, they may range in size and shape, but are generally recognized by having a thin membrane and a round-shaped structure in the middle. 
In addition, they will be much smaller than eggs that we have seen so far, and you may have to go to the 40x lens to see them clearly. No discussion on fecal flotations can be complete without mentioning tapeworms. Tapeworms do not shed eggs, so they are hardly ever found in a fecal flotation. They are diagnosed by observing tapeworm segments in and around the anal area and on the bedding material of the pet. Many owners will get frustrated when they are told that the fecal flotation was negative only to find tapeworms on their pet a few days later. Educating a client about what a fecal flotation can or can't do will prevent this frustration from occurring. Tapeworm eggs are contained in the tapeworm segment itself and are spread via the flea once they have left the host. If you were to crush up a tapeworm segment inadvertently in a fecal flotation, you would see a bundle of tapeworm eggs as shown below on the right. There are, of course, many more parasite eggs that can be found in a fecal flotation. You have learned about the most common ones. If you see something that looks different from what you have learned about, make sure a doctor is called over to view and identify what you have found.